But I do want to set some context about the public act for and how we got uh, into this. I think we've already heard some introduction of that, but I'd, I'd like to lay that out. I'm working from an assumption, and I'll give you my conclusion at the outset. And, and my conclusion is that Public Act 4 is supposed to be a solution to a problem. And the question in my mind is, is it in fact a solution to the problem that it was intended or, or designed or claimed uh, to be? And, and to reveal my hand at, at the outset, I, I think it's not. I think essentially the problem that we face is a fiscal problem, a financial problem. I think that the solution by Public Act 4 is essentially to design a management system that doesn't deal, in fact, the one thing I think the emergency manager cannot do is raise revenues. Uh, and, and that's pretty explicit. And yet, I would argue that's pretty basic to the questions that we have. Back before he was elected governor, excuse me, before he took office as governor, but after the election, uh, governor, then elect Snyder, set up a commission to look at uh, what was the fiscal situation of, of uh, uh, local communities and so on. And their conclusion was, the state of Michigan, I'm quoting, and many of its local government go uh, governments, even those best fiscally managed, even those best fiscally managed, are experiencing severe economic stress, end of quote. So that's the context of, of, of that report, saying that under their analysis, governments in Michigan, even those best managed, are facing severe economic stress. There have been a few things happened then, since then. Uh, one of them is that uh, the Michigan legislature, looking at these distressed municipalities, reduced, once again, in a continuing pattern, revenue sharing, monies that go to uh, those local communities. So they have the report that it's not a management issue, it is a fiscal stress issue. The response to that was to reduce, as the governor proposed, the legislature then enacted a reduction in revenue share, dollars that go back to local units for police, fire, services, and so on. Another thing that's happened that you may have noticed, you may have read about it in the paper, heard about it on the radio, seen on TV, is we've had a housing debacle. Did you hear about that? Remember that one? Uh, one of the things that is important to keep in mind is that local governments <laughs> largely depend for their services on the property tax. If you have property plummeting in value, revenues then to local units do what? Plummet. So you add that to the loss of revenue sharing and so on. Policymakers, I would guess, uh, people in the legislature, for example, if, if I could imagine how they might think, uh, would find themselves looking to solve fiscal problems by dealing with what we always used to call the low-hanging fruit. One of the low-hanging fruits, the easiest things to cut out, are things like revenue sharing dollars, because they're big dollars, uh, and, and if you can cut them out, you can, that helps you balance your state budget. So everything that's reduced in terms of something like revenue sharing, which may amount to hundreds of, of millions of dollars, is then a benefit to the state as it tries to balance the budget, but passes that uh, liability or cost or stress or whatever you call it onto uh, local units. So that's the context that I think is important to keep in mind. And, and then to say the solution to that problem is to get better management assumes that the problem is uh, 
with the local government, who's been elected, you, you know, the incompetence, uh, uh, fraud, uh, all those, those kinds of things. And I, I, I'm not here to deny that happens. I think I've read about that too. Uh, but it is to say that's a kind of one-size-fits-all solution to a problem that is faced by every community in, in the state of Michigan. Uh, and and it's, it's a problem that uh, uh, is haunting uh, programs throughout the state of Michigan. So I, I think it's important to keep that in mind and, and then to say, okay, is this the best response to the problem that has been uh, described? There was a previous act, as, as uh, 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 Reverend Pickney mentioned, uh, Public Act 72, which uh, gave the state, I, I should say one other thing, as, as an opener, your context setting, uh, halfway through my remarks, it's not quite an opener. Uh, the, uh, and, and that is local units of government in Michigan are creatures created by uh, the state. They, they, they don't act or operate independently. Essentially, the state has the power to do uh, what it has done, uh, unless it's in violation of the Constitution. But the state has the ability to uh, 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 govern or, or give governance powers or take them away from a, from a local unit. That is, is part of the creation that, uh, uh, that we have. <coughs> the, uh, uh, I talked about what's happened uh, in terms of the budget add a couple of other things. Under the budget of the current fiscal year we're in, which is the first fiscal year of, of the uh, uh, Snyder administration, we have seen significant cuts in addition to revenue sharing, cuts, for example, to local schools. Uh, and, and uh, you know, for the 470 bucks per pupil and so on. That also has a great impact on uh, uh, the whole issue of fiscal management and, and management. Uh, so there, there are a whole series of actions or inactions at the state level that I think have exacerbated the problem in terms of what local governments are, are facing at the present time, in addition to the overall uh, economic problem. 